Yes, this is something I, I focus on a lot. I was born under Mercury retrograde, but that doesn't mean I'm totally immune. Um, <laughs> I do tend to feel more productive if you happen to be born under Mercury retrograde or Mars or Venus, and then that event happens. It's usually a pretty good time for you personally. However, <clears throat> a lot of people around you were not born under this and that's where the miscommunications can happen um so you sort of can thrive <clears throat> during retrogrades and this is for anybody not just if you were born under it when you are working alone um, it's really good for solitary writing projects for anything that you ne have needed to finish i can really you know everybody can probably think of unfinished projects and the retrogrades are actually supporting you to do that. And if your plans get canceled, then all of a sudden you're like, okay, fine. I'll clean the closet. I've been meaning to do that anyway. <laughs> you know, So you kind of need this. Um, these Mercury retrograde is the most common cycle that we get. We get about four of them per year. Um, but the special ones are Mars or Venus, which don't happen every single year. This year we get to skip Venus retrograde and we will have Mars, but not until the very end of the year. So it's sort of out of our hair for a while. Um, I'll do a quick recap of the Mercury retrograde that just happened. That was the one December 13th to January 1st. It started out at eight degrees of Capricorn and went all the way back to 22 degrees of Sagittarius. So from the 13th to the 22nd of December was Capricorn. Mercury retrograde had kind of a different flavor than the second part of the retrograde. I personally felt a little more productive, but again, I'm a Mercury retrograde person, but I'm thinking this Capricorn energy could have encouraged people to wrap something up for the year. Like, let's just get this done. And so I don't have to worry about it next year or it will make next year easier. When Mercury went retrograde into Sagittarius, I think it had more of a distracting energy in a way, um, you know, maybe causing you to forget certain things you're supposed to do because there's so many fun distractions and it, it kind of lined up right with holiday time. Um, so it's kind of interesting to note the, the sign that the retrogrades are in because then you can try to make the most of that time period and also just set yourself up for success by not trying to schedule something really important during a Merc Mercury retrograde, because that's the time it's more likely for something to get misunderstood, to get lost in translation or just physically lost. Um, you know, you just really want to be kind of following through with what you already said you would do. And then you can really enjoy the retrogrades, I think, and enjoy a chance to maybe not pack your schedule. Um, <clears throat> I think, you know, because Mercury rules the mind, the sign of the retrograde can also kind of affect um, how you're thinking, right? And so if Mercury, when it was retrograding Capricorn, we might have been um, maybe too hard on ourselves thinking we should have been getting more done. Or Mercury retrograde in Sagittarius can be the opposite, like overly optimistic. Oh, I think I can probably do all of this by midnight on December 31st. <laughs> and then <laughs> New Year's comes and you, you kind of had to realize, okay, that was a bit ambitious. Um, so knowing the energies of the signs can be helpful to, to, again, sort of rebalance yourself and manage your expectations of that time period. But the good news for us is that we are not going to have another Mercury retrograde, <clears throat> excuse me, until April 1st. So here we are into the next three 
open wide months um, where everybody is eager to get new things started. And we really have that opportunity. Now the April 1st to April 25th Mercury retrograde will be in Aries. I feel like in Aries Mercury retrograde is one of the most challenging ones because Aries wants to initiate but Mercury retrograde is saying, no, you can't. So it's like telling a little kid they can't go out and run around when they want to. <laughs> um, you have to really channel the energy. You have to do something, especially during a Mercury retrograde um, in Aries. So give yourself a to-do list in advance. Um, get something started that will keep you nice and busy during that Aries Mercury retrograde. And then your anxious self won't be trying to start a million new projects because you just gave yourself homework. Um, that would be my tip for that. And Mercury retrograde in Aries is also really good for resolving anger from the past. That's one of the expressions of Aries. It's passion and anger. There's kind of that fine line in those emotions. And if you have to resolve anything, this is a really good time to, to realize, okay, that was in the past. Maybe that's time to let it go. But first, you might have to experience a flare up of that anger or for the passion facet of it. You know, Mercury retrogrades are kind of notorious for people's exes showing up and you kind of may have this resurgence of passion and you have to remember, oh, that's right. It's a retrograde time period. Maybe I need to rethink this after Mercury goes direct. Um, that doesn't mean you can't enjoy the moment. I'm not one of those astrologers who kind of puts a ban on dating <laughs> during retrogrades, but I do say proceed with caution and try to just stay in the moment. There's, I do put a ban on planning for the future <laughs> with, a, with another person in particular. So um, that, that can actually kind of take the pressure off, actually. Um, the next retrograde, so we have April 1st to 25th, then we get all of May, all of June, all of July. This is lovely compared to last year. Three, you know, we're getting these nice three-month chunks, retrograde-free. We're going to have August 5th to August 28th. And remember, all of this is on the timeline, so don't stress if you're missing some dates here. And that retrograde goes four degrees Virgo all the way back to 21 degrees Leo. Um, I feel like the Virgo part of the retrograde could feel more challenging again, because Virgo is an analytical sign and it's in, you know, Mercury is ruling our intellect. So people may really be overanalyzing things around that time. And so the dates that it's in Virgo specifically is August 5th to the 13th. Luckily it's kind of, um, you know, a shorter part of retrograde before it goes all the way back to 21 Leo. So keep in mind, you know, if you're working with other people during that time period, to watch yourself that you're not immediately criticizing others or criticizing yourself. Um, try to channel the, the analytical energy more towards refining a work that's already in progress. You know, you'll have a lot more success there. How can we perfect this instead of taking a new idea and dissecting it and finding out what could be wrong with it? That's new ideas are not going to go well at this time anyway. So you might as well refine a work in progress. You know, this again, Mercury Retro in Virgo is super powerful for writing or editing. Um, so you can definitely make use of that. You could probably catch a lot of errors in your work at that time and be like, Ooh, I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad I caught that. So <clears throat> when Mercury goes retro in Leo, that'll be August 14th, all the way through the 28th. And that could be like kind of a nice respite. I think like a vacation time. Travel is not, you know, prohibited during Mercury Retro. KJ is an expert on this. She's a world traveler and she knows some really good tips and tricks. You do want to double check things, but it can be a great time to escape your reality while Mercury is in retro anyway, right? If you don't want to get new projects started, Mercury Retro and Leo is very playful. You may want to just return to some of the very fun activities that you used to do that you had forgotten some fun fell off your schedule that mercury retrograde and leo will remind you 
about putting it back on. Now we're going to have our other retrograde of the year, November 25th to December 15th. This is all Sagittarius, 22 to 6 degrees. You may be noticing that most of these retrogrades involve fire signs. They all do. Some of them have a little bit of earth, but all four include fire signs. That's a big deal, too, because every year, either fire, air, water, or earth is dominant in the retrogrades. And it kind of sets the tone. So um, for fire sign retrograde, it's about reviewing our past actions. I think last year it was more airy and we had to think about what we had been saying, what we had been saying we would do, what other people said to us. We maybe had to revisit conversations, but with it in, in fire signs, it's more about, Ooh, what have we done? Like, did we need to do that? <laughs> do we need to redo that? <laughs> These kind of things that I think are going to come up. So the Sagittarius one at the end of November November 25th to December 15th, that will probably focus on values and beliefs. Um, you may think, have I been walking my talk? Like I maybe I'm not actually behaving in a way that aligns with my values anymore. That could come to light. But I think there's a really positive spin to Mercury Retro and Sagittarius where you might renew some of your faith in the universe too, because Sagittarius is such an optimistic sign. And so it might, you might get some magical reminder that the world is not a bad place. You know, that can be a thing that happens during Mercury retro in Sagittarius. Um, just, again, avoid being overly idealistic in your planning. That's always, that's always good anytime, but especially during this, this part at the end of the year when Mercury is retro in Sagittarius. And as we close out the year, it will be double retrograde because we get Mars retrograde December 6th, right? So that kind of comes in right on top of that final Mercury retro. I'm okay with it because we want to slow down at the end of the year. The only thing that people might not be as excited about is this Mars retrograde goes December 6th of 24 to February 23rd of 2025. So we're, we'll talk about 2025 next year, but I'm thinking, yeah, people aren't going to be able to just shoot out of the gates at the beginning of 2025. So that's all the more reason to maybe put on the gas in 2024, because then you'll have things that you're building that you've already done. It's, it's really good motivation maybe to not procrastinate. If you've been thinking, should I do this in 24 or the beginning of 25? Well, now you know, mm, 24 is probably the better time, right? Um, so this Mars retrograde is going to be at six degrees Leo back to 17 degrees of Cancer. Um, and again, these Mars retros are only every two years. They give us a really good opportunity to review our behaviors. If we try to like push new ideas with you know, to anybody, it, there's a lot of resistance. Um, so it's really better to think about what we can get done on our own. So that, that is kind of similar to the Mercury retrograde. Between December 6th and just January 5th of the next year, um, that whole last month of 24, basically, Mars will be retrograde in the sign of Leo. So it's going to probably feel really powerful. Um, I think we're all going to need to be mindful about overpowering others. And there's probably a stronger desire to get your way under this astrology. So it makes me think, ooh, yeah, I'm a little concerned, you know, because we'll just have had these elections. And then here's this really willful Mars and Leo that's all blustery. And I can picture political figures who act that way. And I'm like, oh, no, what's gonna happen? So um, yeah, we just have to kind of, in our personal life, you know, try to avoid that, that little inner temper tantrum from happening, because that's not going to be productive. Mars also rules our passionate nature. Um, and so you can see how we might over romanticize people or situations during a Mars retro. If you're out in the dating scene and you end up meeting somebody after December 6th of this year, going into the new year, 
you got to really like take off the rose colored glasses because you might just feel like you're in this romance novel and it might not actually be exactly what you're seeing. So um, again, have fun. It could be a very fun time, <laughs> but I think that no, be an awareness of the backdrop of the astrology can help you not get too carried away. Um, so I think, yeah, the benefit of Mars retro and Leo is that we're going to kind of reconnect again with our childlike self, just like we did in the Mercury retrograde in Leo and maybe enjoy some fun activities that we haven't done in a long time. And I think that will also make December a pretty good vacation month um, with all the parameters of traveling under double retrogrades being <laughs> being aware of all of those yeah um i i think it's a good time to yeah actually not try to do anything too ultra serious <laughs> so um that's my rundown on the retrogrades i feel really excited that again when you get your timeline you're gonna see like these big three month chunks of time with no interplanet retrogrades and we haven't had that luxury in quite a while so um I'm very excited about making the most of that this year.